Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day and welcome to the Tundra Dude 34 YouTube channel. Just about a week and a half ago, we saw the news about the 2024 Toyota Tundra and what is coming with it. Now, I waited to not make a pro and con video till now. I waited for all the information to come out. I waited for the build and price tool to come out. And we've seen that all enter into our lives on toyota.com with the news and the build and price tool. I built a few Tundras just to see what was new, what was different, and I formed a little pro and con list. Now, when you hear this pro and con list, I ask you to go down in the comments below and let me know not just what you think about my pros and cons, but what are some of yours with this model year 2024 Toyota Tundra, which to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting a lot of changes because this is only the third year of the new generation Tundra. I would think more massive changes would come around five. That's what I'm thinking, 2025, maybe 2026, so four or five years out, but who knows? They did do quite a few changes and some things that people asked for quite a bit. So let's start with the pros and then we will end on the cons. Number one for me has got to be that limited coming with a different kind of TRD off-road package now. They basically got rid of all the chrome on the limited and they body colored the surround. They blacked out the Toyota badge up front. They blacked out... Uh, the emblems down the side of the truck like i think what they did small little stuff along the way really went a long way with the limited and what they needed to do because the way it was in 2022 and 2023 if you went into the sr5 trd off-road you got yourself blacked out emblems down the side that flowed nicely with what they were trying to do with that trd off-road package but if you went limited trd off-road it kept the chrome emblems on the side uh, and it just didn't give it the look that I thought they went with the SR5. I think this is a great thing that they're doing. It looks a lot more mean. Everything flows together really, really nicely when you look at the truck. And don't forget, for SR5 and Limited, there is uh, Solar Octane available now. And in a lot of the pictures, you'll see Solar Octane on that new Limited TRD off-road package. And it looks beautiful. So the small changes to the Limited are absolutely amazing. And just one thing in case you haven't heard yet, that digital gauge cluster used to only be available on the Limited if you got the iForce Max. Well, now the digital gauge cluster is available Limited and up, regardless of engine choice, okay? So everybody's really happy about that. So my first pro has to do with our favorite term of the Toyota Tundra. It always has been the Limited. So that's number one. When we go to the second thing on the pro list, I mean, this is an easy one because people have been asking for it for so long. There's finally a TRD off-road package option on the Platinum. Now, why people wanted this uh, is because the sister truck to the Platinum is the 1794, correct? Now, that 1794 gave you the TRD off-road package. The 1794 is a Western theme, and not everybody out there likes all the crazy chrome on that truck or the saddle brown interior or the available cream interior. They like the Platinum because all of the outside of the truck is body color and dark chrome, almost blacked out. It looks really good. And on the inside, all of the interior is all blacked out, blue ambient lighting. It has a nice look to it, genuine leather. The reason I call it the sister truck to 1794 is they share the options as far as the level. Both of them have the JBL sound system, pano roof, all these standard features. The difference was Western theme on the 1794 and you could get the TRD off-road. Well, now you can get the TRD off-road so you could have that sleek look on the Platinum and the TRD off-road package, which now gives you locking rear diff, multi-terrain select, downhill assist control. So now you get some functional things along with the wheels, the tires, and the Bilstein suspension. So has to be a pro. Finally, after all these years, way back into the second generation, people have been asking for the TRD off-road on the Platinum. Well, it is here. Another big pro, the three-inch TRD lift has been a real pain for people in the last model year as far as getting it ordered, bringing it to a dealership, and figuring out a dealership that has put one on or is willing to put one on. The labor uh, apparently was kind of an intense amount of labor as far as hours, so it got really expensive, and some dealerships never did it and didn't want to do it. I've heard a lot of stories from a lot of different people. So now Toyota made it very easy. You can order it from the factory, meaning it's a factory option. So if a dealership is allocating a truck, they could have the truck delivered to the dealership with that lift already on from the factory. It makes everything a little bit easier. You don't have to go find a good deal on one yourself. You don't have to go find a dealership to put it on for you. It's already done when it comes in uh, to the lot. So I think that's a great idea. Now, if you still wanted to go and try to find a deal, 
and find a dealership to put it on. That's still absolutely available too by going to your parts department if you already own a truck. This just makes it easier for people who are thinking about it, uh, you know, when they're ordering their Tundra, uh, you know, just something to make it a little bit easier. It is time to talk about the cons though. What are we not happy about when it comes to uh, the 2024 Tundra? And I'm gonna save my favorite one for last. The first one I'm gonna talk about is something very personal to me. I'm very upset with Toyota for getting rid of Army Green. Army Green is no longer available for 2024. My mind is blown on that. Army Green has been a pretty popular color along the past few model years. It's been on the Tundra since 2020, where it was on the TRD Pro and then scooted over to some of the other trims. One of the hardest Tundras to get when the new generation first came out and the most sought after, maybe even more than the TRD Pro, was that 1794 TRD Off-Road iForce Max with the Army Green on it. That was tough to get. A lot of people loved Army Green. I'm sure there's a reason they got rid of it. Probably sales, something like that. I don't know. But I'm very sad to see the Army Green go. And it makes me remember and miss my 2020 TRD Pro. So let me know what you think. Is it just me? Are you sad to see Army Green go? Because even if you don't like it, it's always a good option to have. And what I've noticed from other brands out there, when they get rid of an Army Green or a Military Green, whatever they want to call it, it usually comes back years later because people really want it. So what is your thoughts on Army Green? All right, number two for me in the con list is no tow hooks. Now we've talked about this. I didn't, you know, like I said in the beginning of the video, I didn't expect a lot of massive changes to Tundra because this is the third model year of a new generation. But one of the most important and biggest complaints from all of you guys out there is tow hooks. All trucks should have them. I thought Toyota might have integrated something into the front end to bring in those tow hooks, but they are still not here. So we are still waiting and everybody is still going to push for tow hooks in the future for the Toyota Tundra. They got to have them. All right. Got to have the tow hooks. There are a few brands out there that are making aftermarket tow hooks to fit on your new generation Tundras now, but it's not the same. Toyota's got to figure something out with that and come out with some tow hooks for the front of that truck. There's plenty of things they could do. Slight changes to the front fascia, the front bumper. Tow hooks need to be on a pickup truck. Absolutely. Definitely a con that they are still not there. And I would have lost a bet. I really thought they might have been here by now. Now, my last con, most important con, all of you will agree with this, we know. I want to see what you guys have to say about this. Final con for 2024 is the pricing. What is the ultimate goal with the pricing of these trucks nowadays? Now, I'm not just talking about the Tundra here, really. I'm talking about the entire automotive industry. Specifically with the Tundra, because that's what this channel is all about. I feel like they're pricing themselves right out of the middle class, though. All right. These trucks are getting to the point where the, I'm just I'm blown away by some of the pricing. The interest rates are out of this world right now. There are no good incentives that used to make it possible when the prices started to get high. Every year, these trucks just come up with a bigger price tag on them. I think we need to go back to the drawing board and we need to come up with a way to kind of just time out and see where we're going because the, they're pricing themselves right out of the market where half ton pickups belong. And again, yes, I'm talking about the Tundra right now, but it's not just the Tundra. It's all over the industry. All of these pickup trucks, you could drive into any of these lots and see these prices on anything. Doesn't matter what the brand is, but because we talk Tundra, we got to talk about the Tundra specifically today. Now I want to show you just this quick little build and price thing I did on Toyota and let me know what you think about this. I went with I started with, I should say, a 2023 Tundra SR5, okay? 2023. I didn't put anything on it. The only thing that's on this, it's a crew max, five and a half foot bed, four wheel drive, 51370 for this truck. I did the same exact, I won't even call it build, setup on the 2024 SR5, and it's 52,400. Now, this is at the very beginning of the build. All right, so we haven't even got up in to, you know, some of the higher trims or better packages. Please keep in mind for my 2020 TRD Pro Tundra, Crew Max, I paid $56,000 in 2020. So now you're looking at an SR5, pretty much base model at 52.4. Now, when we started to get a little crazy for the 2023, I put the best package on it. 
which was the TRD off-road premium package with options. Pretty much gives you everything. Same four-wheel drive, same crew max, same setup as the other one. I just added this main package. And the price came out to 60615 So we went from what the 2023 was, 51370, and we put the best package on it, and now we're at 60615 Now that's 2023. For 2024, 61890 on that 2024 from 60615 All right, so it went up to 61890 there. It went up a little bit. So you're seeing an increase. Now, some of you may say, well, that's only $1,200, $1,500 increase, but the prices are already soaring. So any increase hurts now. And 61.8, we're looking at an SR5. When you get up into Limited, when you get up into Platinum, 1794, iForce Maxis, TRD Pro, Capstone, we're just at the point now where something's got to give. And we got to figure out where we want to be when it comes to where we are in the half ton market. And again, I know I'm talking Tundra here, but go to Ford, go to Ram, go to any of the other lots. You will see these big prices as well. I think collectively as an automotive industry, we just got it. We got to figure out the pricing. It's just gone. It's like, it doesn't even make sense. So I just want to hear what you guys think about that. I know you'll agree on the pricing because every time I do a video uh, of a dealership walk and we're looking at all the nice tundras out there, the first thing everybody says, it's the pricing. It's insane. So I know there's a lot of new technology on these vehicles versus yesteryear. All right. There's a lot of crazy gadgets and everything. And none of that is free. I get that. But where do we just hold up a bit and figure this thing out? Because I'll be honest with you, I'll never be able, and I feel like a lot of you are in the same boat too. SR5 is where I will always be. And SR5 at 57,000 is at my ceiling at this point. So I don't know. I want to hear what you guys think. Do you agree with me on the pros? Do you agree with me on the cons? And how do you feel about the pricing? And that one, I can't wait to hear what you guys think. What do you think the automotive industry should do with this half ton market? How can it be fixed so everybody wins, especially that middle class, which should be the goal of the half ton market like it's always been? Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook at 100 Dude 34, 100 Dude 34, gmail.com. Guys, let me know what you think, but you have a great day. Be safe and be well.